Hi, today I am going to be drawing a coupe, three of them, with my designs each leaning towards a certain brand. But first I'd like to define what is a coupe in the automotive world. As it often the case, there is no 100% accurate definition of the term. But as a general rule, we refer to a coupe as a four-wheeled car in a three-box design with two doors and one or two rows of seats. In order to understand how this term came to be, we have to jump back a little in the past. Let me show what I mean. Back in the days, people used carriages for their transportation needs. There were dozens if not hundreds of different types of carriages. But the point is that one of the very typical types of carriages looked like this one. It was called a stagecoach. And at some point, they said, what if I want to take a more casual, private ride to do my daily tasks or just go shopping with a friend without being driven in a giant six-seater carriage? So they've decided to cut it right about here. Let me draw for you what they have ended up with. I'll make a sketch first to establish the main proportions and then I'll render it. This isn't a specific model of a carriage that has been around. It's just based on the general layout of this type of vehicle. It's a snaggy cabin, big enough for usually two people, it's more of a closed, private experience as you can see. And it's much more convenient for your daily use now. It looks more exciting too in my opinion. Somehow I think even back then these two door short models considered to be the better looking ones. I have finished my sketch now and I'll render it more accurately to bring up the volumes and overall design. I think it's a good idea to doodle fast some people in my sketch. Especially when I'm doing something that I have never done before as in this case these carriages. I just never drew carriages. It will give me more confidence that I am on the right way with my proportions and size in general. Because I've decided to render this carriage a little nicer than the previous one, so I thought I would give more attention to my passenger as well. A cute young lady. She's smiling because she got this little feathered hat. The number of horses pulled your carriage dependent on the type of the carriage, how far and fast you want to go. There could be up to 6 or even 8 horses. In our case, it would be 1 or 2. I'll go for two, looks more convincing that way. Compact, agile and discreet. This is what you get when you cut your stagecoach shorter. And that's little, little, that, and that's literally, and that's exactly what the French word coupé means. It means cut, and that's how this term came about. So here we have what was originally called a coupé or coupe. By the way, in most cases, this rear window wasn't actually there. So let's go private. That's better. And before we go back to the modern days, I'd like to give you as a bonus drawing a car which technically isn't a coupe, but it's important for us because with its layout it shows very well this transition era from carriages to automobiles as we know them today. Of course there were many other examples of the same layout, but this one is something special. Some of you may have already recognized it. Please meet the one and almighty Bugatti Type 41 Royale. Couple of words to this gorgeous piece of machinery 
produced from 1926 to 1933, one of the early models of the then young company founded by Ettore Bugatti himself. Look at it. The beauty, the sheer size and its engine. This car was epic in every single way and it still is. And above all, for me as a designer, I admire how timeless the appearance of this car is. In cases like this, I always think how a typical street would look like by the time this car was in production, and not just the streets, but the mentality and the knowledge of the general population in terms of technology, art, and their general life experience, which I think was much more limited than today for a number of reasons. And then imagine they see this rolling down the street. I mean, looking at this object even today makes such a strong impression. And to see this one century ago, that must have been shockingly exciting to say the least. I'd like to go back to the dimensions of this vehicle just, just for a second, because this one is hilarious. Not everyone may realize the size of this object, because there are no other objects around it. And I did the math. This is a 180 cm tall guy next to this beast. I mean, look at this. He is dwarfed by the presence of the reality. He looks so surreal standing next to it. Let's go ahead and draw a car next to it that is considered huge in this day and age. A 2022 Rolls Royce Phantom. That's right. This is how it would compare to one of the largest cars on the market today. In numbers it looks like this. The Phantom stands 5.8 meters long. Huge car, isn't it? Bugatti Type 41. 6.4 meters. It's 60 centimeters longer than the Phantom. And it's crazy. By the way, this is to all people out there saying modern car dimensions are getting out of hand. Alright, here you have it. The timeless beauty, the Bugatti Type 41 Royale, that shows very well how the layout of the early automobiles was derived from the carriages. What I'm noticing here right now, the word coupe is French, Bugatti brand is French, and the word carriage is French as well. Hmm, that's interesting. Today we have many types of cars in all configurations that are called coupes without being one. Here are a few examples. Mercedes GLE, which is marketed as an SUV coupe. Then we have a Mercedes CLS, which is considered a four-door coupe. At least that's what Mercedes wants us to think. And then the Mazda RX-8, which looks more like a coupe than the others, but has two small extra doors. And some brands have even gone so far as to include the word coupe into the names of their non-coupe products. But I will stick to the roots for this video. Alright, the first coupe I'd like to draw today, by the way, I gave them names just for fun and to bring in some structure to what I'm doing here. Anyway, the first one I've called a puncher. It's a compact car, front engine, rear wheel drive, lots of muscles and character. Very short overhangs front and rear, pronounced wheel arches connected by a strong undercut running through the shoulder area. Simple yet effective recipe. I have my sketch now and I'll outline it carefully while making some corrections to the proportions and design to make it more mature. The classic coupe silhouette we all know and love, the height is of a normal car, as well as the ground clearance. In this case I wanted to emphasize this muscular character of something that is compact and usable, yet strong looking and solid in its posture. What makes this type of cars out is the fact that, despite all its muscles, the package itself is pretty normal. I have to keep that in mind and not exaggerate too much with the proportions. These types of cars aren't designed as sports cars right from the ground up. They are just heavily upgraded versions of the cars they are based on. The cars that are originally nothing special in terms of performance. I like this concept of a daily drivable powerhouse. It's suitable for the most daily activities. And when it needs to be, it can be very fast or, if you call for it, even brutal. Here's the final result for this one. 
On the top left you see my key sketch that defines the overall character and the main design features. Top right would be then my pre-render so to say, for a better understanding where I am going with my design and thinking about some changes if needed. And in the center you see the final render. Next up, another coupe category. This one I've called a screamer. The main difference with the puncher is that these types of coupes are generally designed as sports cars right from the beginning. As a result, they are much more performance oriented. The layout is generally the same, but the package is driven to the extreme, so to speak. This one is considerably longer and lower, and it's wider too. The cabin is pushed all the way back, transitioning rapidly into the tight rear end. The bonnet is very long and the front end is very much pronounced. I have to keep this criteria in mind when I sketch cars from this category. And also because of the more extreme package and usually higher end price of the product, the designers have more freedom to make radical design decisions. Like in this case this extreme side blade around the front wheel pulled in belly and a overall more sophisticated surface treatment due to the more expensive manufacturing processes. Also, while the puncher got this visually pushing forward appearance, this one looks more like an arrow ready to be released. I am adding here more details and putting on shadows to bring out the volumes at the same time looking that everything fits well together. Wheel design is an essential part of the overall design. And I personally love rendering wheels. For me, it's the moment when a car gets its final stance completing the image. This is one of the most exciting moments that I usually push towards the end, just to have that clear satisfaction point of completing a render. A little side note here. As I was doing this render, I've noticed that my side blade, that did work very well in the sketch, doesn't really do that anymore being separated by color. So I have decided to change it, as well as the design of the wheels that would match better the rest of the car. You see, sometimes we have to get rid of the things we like. I really like this side blade, but I realized that first of all it doesn't flow with the rest of the car, second of all it makes the car look heavier because of its vertical nature. So I got rid of it. Changes are inevitable part of the design process. The last one I called a train. Guess the brand. Unlike the first two, this one is supposed to be a very comfortable premium coupe. And for me, as a car designer, it's important to consider certain things that are related to what this product is about. Apart from the styling, among other things, it means in this case relatively high roofline that goes all the way back and stays high to give more headroom to the rear passengers. My C pillar is almost behind the rear wheels now. Therefore, my rear overhang automatically becomes very long as well. This isn't a bad thing because it allows me to create a very elegant, nicely dropping rear end profile. The front overhang, on the other hand, is as short as possible. Firstly, it doesn't have to be long from the technical point of view, unlike the screamer. Secondly, it simply looks much better in combination with the long tail. The front stands upright, proud, and very self confident. In this case, I am looking for an appearance that's powerful yet calm at the same time. And that ultimately influences my design decisions. The process is the same here as with other two. After completing my initial ideation phase, I've made my outlines and have done some general design revision at the same time. Kind of checking if everything works as I imagined. Going from the lines to creating volumes with shaders, I'm trying to keep as much of the original sketch feeling as possible. Sometimes it goes fast without any design changes, but sometimes it requires some massaging of the surfaces. It's not always possible to keep everything from your initial idea. In this case I was lucky and it went pretty seamless. Again, the top left is my fast key sketch, the top right would be my design and surface check, and in the center is the final result I am happy with since it translates all the things I wanted to say with my original sketch. Alright, here we have all three guys in one shot. 
they are aligned by the rear bumper and we can compare their proportions and features once again. The puncher, something rather for the younger audience. As we can see from its proportions, it's a regular car, but on steroids. We have a strong bonnet, massive fenders and aggressive bumpers, but at its core is a normal car that has been heavily modified at the factory. The Screamer, on the other hand, for those with more experience looking for something outstanding in terms of look and performance. It's a supercar that was meant to be won right from the beginning. And we can see this by its much more radical package and pronounced aerodynamic features. And the train is our effortless and cozy Voyager. Instead of openly showing its power, these type of cars radiate it. Do you get the difference? So, why am I kind of telling all these background stories to myself? Why do I spend so much time talking about what a car is instead of discussing more the actual design? Well, it's because the better we understand the essence of the product and who is it meant for, the better we can reflect each character in our designs. And that's the whole point. So let's call the other two guys for the final comparison. Shall we? That's it for today. Your comments and suggestions are very much appreciated. The more feedback I get, the more interesting content I'll be able to make for you. Thanks for watching and have a great time. No worries, you'll be the crusher.